What is going on everyone? So today I'm sitting inside of the Toyota Avalon TRD. Now if that sounds odd, that's because this is the first ever TRD badged sedan along with the Camry TRD. Now having driven and reviewed the Camry TRD, uh, I'll link that video in my description, I have a good basis of comparison between the two. With the Avalon being Toyota's most luxurious, most comfortable offering, I'm very curious to see how the TRD treatment has transformed this vehicle. So this is gonna be my full in-depth review. We're going to go over everything on the exterior, the interior, and obviously take it for a drive. So let's go ahead and get started. everyone let's go ahead and check out the 2020 Toyota Avalon TRD now if you guys saw my review over the Camry TRD you know that that was actually a pretty good car and TRD did a lot more than just throw some looks and badges on this car this has a lot of functional things to make this handle better and to make this a more enjoyable drive and that's gonna be things like thicker underbody braces this is gonna have TRD tuned front rear suspension, you're gonna have these lighter uh, TRD specific wheels, which this also shares with the Camry. So this is gonna be finished off in Renaissance Red, the same red you get on the Camry TRD. And this red looks so, so good. In the sunlight, it just makes this thing look incredibly vivid, paired with all the black accents. This thing is a looker for sure. In person, it has such a dominating presence. Literally everyone looks at this thing, everyone asks about it. And when you see this thing driving towards you, that big massive grill is just insane looking. And speaking of the grill, let's go ahead and take a little bit of a closer look at it. So this thing is massive. And I'm telling you guys, I've been massacring bugs all week with this grill because it's just so big. And the way it has these, uh, I guess crazy designs in it. You do get a lot of bugs caught in this. Now I was able to clean it all out before filming right now, but just know it was definitely a hassle. But if you don't live in an area that has a ton of bugs, this thing looks really cool. You've got these really large functional uh, areas here onto the side, and that's basically gonna flow air around the wheels, um, help lessen that turbulence, and um, just make sure the air hitting the front is being as effectively used as possible. Now this Toyota badge is glazed over because you have all of your sensors here. You have full LED lights on this car. You don't have any kind of like a cool daytime running LED, but unlike the camera, you get full LEDs, low beams, high beams. It looks better at night. It looks more expensive. It looks more appropriate for a TRD badged vehicle. And yeah, I really do like it. Now, as we come down to the wheels, you have wider wheels on the Avalon TRD than you do on a standard Avalon. So these are 235 40s front and rear. These are 19 inch wheels. And these wheels are actually going to be lighter on each corner versus any other wheel that the Avalon offers that's not a TRD. Uh, and they look great. I mean, from a side profile, this thing looks the part. Once again, that black really plays well in contrasting with the super rich and vibrant red of this car. And you have these upgraded brakes. You're going to have 12.9 inch rotors, uh, which is going to be bigger than the standard Avalon. And you get two piston calipers as opposed to the single pistons you get on the standard Avalon and uh, yeah it does a great job and when we take it for a drive you guys will see uh, this is pretty impressive for a massive sedan and when you step back you can really see the length of this thing it is huge big big vehicle uh, this video doesn't do it any justice because I promise you when you see it in person you're gonna think man that is a massively long vehicle and especially since this is lowered a little bit it accentuates that length even more now as we come back to the rear quarter panel this is my favorite angle because it looks the most aggressive now first of all you're going to have this black spoiler here that is specific to the trd and one thing i do like is the tail light design on here it's so aggressive but it has such a three-dimensional look to it uh, it's crazy and it looks awesome it's going to say avalon there on the middle, you have your black TRD badge above that. TRD badge right over here. I'm sorry, black Toyota badge above that. As we come down, you have more of this uh, black trim here. Mini diffuser, and then you have TRD 
specific exhaust. So let's go ahead and take a listen to that exhaust note. All right, you guys, so here's the key for the Avalon TRD. Very simplistic, lock, unlock, trunk release, panic. Right on the back, it's just gonna say Avalon. I wish they would have done something to make it known that you have a TRD, just to make it feel a little bit more special. But either way, you can use your key to get into the vehicle or you have touch sensitive areas on the door. Put your thumb over this ribbed pattern. That's gonna lock it. There's a touch sensor right behind here. That's going to unlock it. Okay, let's go ahead and check out the Avalon TRD's interior. Now coming to the inside, you are going to have an all black interior. And it looks pretty good. Uh, I do like these seats. They are going to have leather and uh, faux suede or Alcantara right here on the side. I got some red stitching here. The leather quality is pretty good. Perforations running through the middle there. More Alcantara right there. You've got this big red uh, leather piece going there in the middle, and then it's gonna say TRD right up top. I quite like the TRD stitching. I think it adds a cool little look to it. Now, as we come back down here, you have aluminum pedals, these red and black Avalon TRD specific mats. It's gonna say Avalon here, and that is going to light up at night, so that does look pretty cool. Then as we move back to the door, you have a speaker right down here for your JBL sound system. You have this interesting like uh, faux, it almost looks like faux aluminum trim, but it's definitely gonna be plastic. I hope you guys can see that. Moving down, this is gonna be, or moving aside, this is gonna be soft. Soft here, really, really soft armrest with some red stitching. Uh, nice quality design right there, quite like that. Uh, your controls here are gonna be slightly tilted, which I think looks cool, so if you get to the side, you guys can see it has this tilt to it, and it kind of looks a little sportier. I, I do quite like it. Um, mirror controls, door locks, um, sorry, window controls, door locks, mirror controls. And then coming over here, you're gonna have a few more of your buttons, um, automatic high beams, traction, trunk release, gas cap release, interior illumination, trip odometer reset, and I do like this design right here. You guys can see how it's got that slant right there, and you've got this like aluminum piece here off to the side. Steering wheel looks great. Manual controls, paddle shifters right back here. What do you guys say we hop in and we'll check out the rest? All right, shutting the door on the Avalon. Nice solid shut. Here's a wider look at the interior for you guys. It's a really good looking interior and I quite like what Toyota did with this. Now to start, start stop button's gonna be right behind the steering wheel, foot in the brake. Let me hit that to start. That's all there is to it. Now the steering wheel itself is going to have perforations on the sides, smooth leather in the middle. We've got this red stitching going right here, all plastic there. Over to the left, you are going to have your media controls. This is to control the menu in the middle, um, volume, voice commands, phone, back, adaptive cruise right over here, previous next, different radio modes, so AM, FM, XM. You guys can see the perforations there, closer look at the red stitching. Coming back here, you're going to have wipers. You don't have automatic wipers, surprisingly. And then over to the left, you're going to have automatic lights, blinkers, obviously. Then moving to this middle screen here, uh, let's go ahead and get a closer look at this. Now, it is full digital there in the middle, full focus here, there we go. And using the controls to the left, I can move up and down through various functions. And it's pretty simplistic to use, and then you can go left and right on each screen. Well, if the screen allows it, you can go left and right. But it's a pretty cool looking system. Um, it's 
it's very easy to use and it looks very high quality it looks like something you'd have in a flagship sedan and that's exactly what that is over to the left you have your tack physical tack over to the right you have your speedometer fuel gauge all that's going to be physical you guys already saw this area up here now moving up the dash is going to be soft touch jbl tweeter right up there now surprisingly you do not have a head-up display the camry has a head-up display not the trd but a fully loaded camera has a head-up display so i actually wish this would have it that would really just put the icing on top of the cake for me with this car one cool thing is that jbl sound system we've got this massive speaker that's going to run all along here and you guys can see just how big it is and it really adds to the listening experience this has an incredible incredible sound system that was one thing i wish the camry trd had was the jbl because that is one of my favorite sound systems in the industry for sure now coming here to the middle we have this uh, big upright screen design you guys can see the whole thing flows up here and it's going to make this big like square head and it's the same system toyota has in basically every other vehicle you have apple carplay and android auto on here so you guys can see apple carplay working and once again if you have android auto you can utilize that as well but the native system is is pretty good i usually just set it up the way i need it use apple carplay and then i never have to go in and mess with anything again my favorite part is this volume knob it's the smoothest volume knob i've ever used in my life it's a random thing but i promise you guys if you're in this car you use it you'll know exactly what i'm talking about coming over here you've got more of that um, interesting design that's going to flow right down there and i love how it's got that triangular sharp shape to it this is going to be all soft touch faux leather right here with some more red stitching you have dual zone climate control you have heated seats but no cooled seats in this car all of your fan speeds defrost things like that and coming back here you have this trd specific shifter nice short stubby shifter it's gonna say trd stamped on top nice leather quality you're going to have some red stitching there aluminum accents there throw it into reverse backup camera different angles right there basically this is just a wider angle this is a more narrow angle and these lines will turn with your steering wheel right there now coming right back here you're going to have a little area here it's super softly padded and then you push that back and you have a deeper storage area with your wireless charging pad in there it's kind of dark so it's really hard to see but just know that your wireless charging pad is in there and you have this nice little pass through here which is kind of a cool design one cup holder two cup holders which is very oddly shaped um, not sure why they shaped it that way but either way it can hold your drinks no issues now coming right down here you are going to have eco normal and then your sport modes hold electronic parking brake this is going to be hard touch plastic right here big armrest so i can fit my arm here someone else can fit their arm there so that's no issue folding that up you have a good amount of storage space lift that up pretty deep you're gonna have a usb i'm sorry three usbs in there coming over here you have your glove box moving up auto dimming mirror with your home link located underneath here full led lights here's a better look at your moonroof but the moonroof looks really good on here brings in a ton of light but let's go ahead and hop in the back seat okay so hopping in the back of the avalon trd now surprisingly i have about the same amount of room back here as i did in the camry trd uh, so i don't have a significant amount more room i have about three inches maybe a little bit more as far as knee room is concerned my feet can slide underneath very easily headroom is is good so sitting pretty much upright uh, the seats don't have much of a recline in them i still have about an inch above my hair which is pretty large and i'm six feet tall and i have this set to my driving position so it is adequate i can fit back here but if you are above like six two six three you may have to slouch a little bit to give yourself some more headroom you have one mat pocket right over here you're going to have two usb ports right underneath your two vents uh, and then as far as the seating you are going to have the perforated leather the uh, alcantara right here you have these red seat belts which i mean red seat belts are always awesome aren't they you're going to have your cup holders right here 
which have this nice like gloss black around it but obviously with gloss black you're going to get lots of fingerprints anytime you touch it cup holders are nice and deep you have a little storage area right here in front so that is nice and then the armrest itself is really soft to rest your arm on so that is a huge plus other than that you have a grab handle here an area to hang things like dry cleaning uh, and that's pretty much going to be it now shutting the door pretty solid door shut uh, the seating or the materials back here are pretty much the same as the front so you have slightly soft touch up here you're gonna have leather here uh, leather here with red stitching you have a decent amount of cubby space and your JBL speaker back here as well so it's gonna wrap up the back seat let's go ahead and check out the trunk space all right, it's coming to the back of the Avalon TRD. Now there's a button right under here. You're just gonna push that, that's gonna open. You can obviously use your key to unlatch it as well. Now once you're back here, you have about 16 cubic feet of space. Obviously you get more when you fold the rear seats down. Now unlike the Camry TRD, you can actually fold the rear seats down in here. In the Camry, you cannot because you do have a brace back there that prevents that from happening. You do not have that in the Avalon TRD. Uh, this one is gonna have the accessory uh, net right here. But beyond that, you do have an Avalon TRD branded floor mat with some nice piping going along the outer side of it. And the width is very good. So fitting things in shouldn't be an issue. This is just gonna be slightly narrow. So if you have things like big boxes or anything that's basically a square, it may be tough fitting it inside of here. Now underneath the floor, you do have a dummy spare underneath there along with your jack assembly equipment as well. Uh, you also have hooks here on the side to hang things like grocery bags. That way they're not flying around in the back seat. And then of course you are going to have your emergency release. That way you don't lock someone in your trunk. So let's go ahead and see what's under the hood. Okay, so under the hood of the Avalon TRD, you're gonna have the exact same power plant as you do in the Camry TRD. Only difference is that you're working with a little bit more weight here. So this is gonna make 301 horsepower, 267 pound-feet of torque from a 3.5 liter naturally aspirated V6. Now that's a good amount of power and this is hooked up to an 8-speed automatic transmission. Uh, fuel economy is pretty okay and you are only going to be able to get this in front-wheel drive. You cannot get it in all-wheel drive. But that's pretty much going to wrap up under the hood. Let's go ahead and see how this thing drives. All right everyone, so driving the Avalon TRD. Now this is quite different from the Camry TRD in both good ways and bad ways. I still don't necessarily consider it a bad thing, but uh, you guys can be the judge of that. So let's go ahead and start with the good things. The good thing is that it's much quieter in here. That was a massive complaint for me with the Camry TRD was that it, it felt like it had no sound deadening. This is so quiet, but you still have enough of the engine note coming in um, enough of that induction noise coming in that it makes it sort of exciting but then on the flip side um, it's it's quieter so uh, you do not get as much of that intake noise and exhaust note as you do in the Camry TRD which already isn't like very loud so you know there is that the other thing I do like is just all the amenities the Camry TRD is the base Camry with the TRD package, so it's the cheapest way you can get into the V6 Camry. This is technically like the most expensive one you can get. And I think that's the way they should have gone on the Camry. I mean, I think you should still offer the base one if you want a cheap entry level V6, but offering the more premium experience with this package, I think is just a perfect combination. Uh, because right now I'm feeling like, okay, I've got all of my luxury, I have all of my comfort, but I have much, much better steering, significantly better brakes. It has bite right at the top, and that really gives you just that immediate confidence, especially when you're driving a car that's as big as this, moving as quickly as it, as it does. Uh, now, obviously, you don't have a bump in horsepower, but 300 horsepower is still plenty in this size of a vehicle. Uh, the tires are significantly better. Uh, they grip really well. These Michelins are the same ones you got on the Camry, so I really liked those. Um, the paddle shifters, I'll use those in just a second once this truck is out of my way, but I mean, they, they're video game-like. The shifting on here, I feel like is worse than the Camry. That's a big complaint for me because uh, sometimes it'll upshift for you, sometimes it'll bounce off the rev limiter, which I would prefer. Um, so I don't really know what's going on there, and sometimes when you downshift, it doesn't even feel like it downshifts any. I'm not sure if because the gear ratios are just that close or what the case is 
but using the paddles on here is not a great experience. It's better just to leave it automatic. But the issue is that um, when you do floor it, it doesn't necessarily jump up very high in the RPMs. It'll go like 4,000 uh, whenever you floor it. So you don't really get that push in the back of your seat like you do in the Camry. I feel like they may be tuned slightly differently, which would make sense because this appeals to a different audience than the Camry TRD. Okay, so once the slight turns green, I'm just gonna absolutely nail it. Here we go. So, you get a little bit of wheel spin, it bogs down, and then it goes. I mean, it sounds great, it sounds really good. And the crazy part is you can drive this quickly and people inside of here aren't getting beat up. With the Camry, it was loud. You do feel it felt like you're getting beat up. And uh, yeah, I just felt like it was a little too rough for a family sedan. This fixes that problem significantly. Uh, so much so that I have this full coffee I just got from Pete's and I feel comfortable having it here, have all my camera stuff in the passenger seat. And I mean, I can drive this thing quickly and not worry about everything just flying around. Like it's good. So let me do the paddle shifters like I was showing or telling you guys about. And I'm in sport mode just so you guys know. The only time you really get a good blip is going in a second. So if I were to, you know. It's okay, so there it bounced off the rev limiter which is great, it sounds so cool. Um, and that's what I want, I'd rather do that than have it upshift for me but now it didn't shift any it didn't shift at all when I did that I don't know what the deal is but either way um, this thing racks up speed very quickly and because of the quiet nature of this car you don't realize it it feels like an effortless grand touring sports car almost that's kind of the feeling you get uh, it feels expensive it feels high quality when you're driving it, the steering is so good for such a big car. Um, I say the steering is right on par with the Camry TRD. And I say handling wise, they feel pretty much the same. This only feels marginally heavier when you're driving it, like, like just barely. And you would really have to drive them back to back to know that 100% for sure. It's been a few months since I've driven the Camry TRD, so to be honest, I'm just doing my best to remember what the Camry felt like, and yeah, I'd say it feels just this much heavier, and that's an amazing accomplishment for a car that's a lot bigger. But yeah, the sound is great. Um, the only th the only issue is using the paddles, you know, leaving it in automatic mode. It does a pretty good job. Uh, the only issue is that it won't downshift far enough to give you a little bit of an exciting experience whenever you do floor it. If you do run into some curvy roads, this will handle them with grace, this will handle them with excitement, but it's not going to be obviously sports car levels of excitement. It's good and it's significantly better handling wise than a normal Avalon. I think they did a great job with giving this a good balance, but I would like to see something a little bit more aggressive, but obviously I wouldn't expect that in the Avalon, preferably in the Camry, which I think Toyota should have done in the first place. I really think they should have went a little bit further with the Camry TRD and left this one just as is because it is perfect for someone who would want a sporty Avalon. This is exactly what I would imagine and exactly how I would picture this thing. Looking, feeling, it's just a really good execution by Toyota. Well, everyone, that's gonna wrap up my review of the Avalon TRD. Now, I think that this is a fantastic car. I think the biggest fault is truly going to be the marketing of this vehicle. I feel like with Toyota, it's hard to know what exactly their performance identity is. Uh, one thing I know for sure is that TRD Pro is going to be things like their most aggressive off-road vehicles. Um, then you have TRD, you have TRD Sport, you have GR for the Supra. So once again, it's hard to know the significance of each.
badge, especially when you're doing it for the first time on a sedan. So I'm not sure if TRD is supposed to be the best offering that they have. I don't know if they're going to plan on doing a TRD Pro of the Avalon to make it you know, with more power, things like that. If they plan on doing a GR version, not really sure the direction that they're headed there. But badge aside, this is an awesome vehicle. I think that Toyota did a great job making this a great handling sedan while also keeping it comfortable, keeping it well equipped and keeping it quiet and keeping it really what an Avalon should be, but just adding that enjoyability factor to it. I think that this is a solid offering the only thing, once again, is the badge. Whether or not you think it deserves a TRD badge, uh, just know that no matter what, this is still an awesome driving vehicle that is extremely well-rounded. Let me know what you guys think about this. Would you save up and get this over the Camry TRD? Would you rather get the Camry TRD? Do you think this should have been called a TRD? Do you think they'll do something even more aggressive in the future? Comment below, and if you guys are new to my channel, I'd love to have you subscribe. Be sure to click the bell, that way you don't miss an upload, and I'll see you guys in the next review. Bye.